You're looking at video of author Salman Rushdie being violently attacked while on stage moments before he was set to give a lecture in New York. Police say he was stabbed at least once in the neck and abdomen, but witnesses to the attack say the suspect either stabbed or punched Rushdie 10 to 15 times over the course of 20 seconds. His agent saying tonight, the news is not good. He will likely lose one eye, the nerves in his arm were severed, and his liver was stabbed and damaged. He is on a ventilator and cannot speak. The 24-year-old was taken into custody immediately after the attack. Joining me now is Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor. So, Raymond, good to see you. And uh, do like you see, see a, a Iranian connection here uh, on this story? And what can you tell us? Well, there clearly is an Iranian connection. Back in 1989, when Salman Rushdie made his name releasing his book, The Satanic Verses, the mullahs in Iran were very upset. They issued a fatwa, a, a death sentence on, on Rushdie. And since that time, two of his translators were stabbed, his publisher was shot, and now we see the accused assailant, a man named, as you mentioned, Hadi Matar. Now, Matar has posted Shiite extremism and is a supporter of the Iranian government. So there's a connection here. This is the regime Joe Biden, incidentally, wants to do a nuke deal with. But it shows you what happens when you demonize thought and free expression and individuals. This is the sad outcome. Look, Sean, when the Da Vinci Code was released, a lot of Catholics were very upset. They didn't chase Dan Brown through the streets. Similarly, when the Book of Mormon came out, Mormons didn't firebomb the Eugene O'Neill Theater. It's still running on Broadway. We have to, in an open society, be able to consider questions and have free debate, not death. And the, the Iranians even have come out with hits on um, Bolton and maybe even Pompeo. So this doesn't end. This continues with mm. the Iranians. And you make a good point. Why would Joe Biden mm. ever want to do a deal with the Iranians? But I, I want to turn quickly to the 2024 election. Yeah. Biden allies are now reportedly pushing him to launch his campaign sooner rather than later. According to Reuters, <laughs> people involved in planning Biden's campaign said that an early announcement would be a smart step for Biden, sending a signal to the general public that Biden is no lame duck. And that Democrats are unified behind his agenda, his personality, and his leadership. Raymond, his personality and his leadership? What say you? Yeah. Why are they so eager? Well, they're so eager because they see this as a moment of victory. That's how they're trying to cast, you know, that he passed this shrunken down, build back better plan, and he's got a 40-year high in inflation. I guess yeah. that's victorious. You know, Sean, it reminded me of that poor carriage horse we saw this week in New York City. It was pulling its carriage, and it fell over in the street. Now, some might call that a thoroughbred, but that thing ain't moving. It's going to lay there, and it's probably time to put it out to pasture. And if you look at the polls, there was a poll done by something called Premise, it's a software company, of Democrats. 61 percent of those Democrats said Joe Biden should not run again. But the people they'd like to see run, Kamala Harris at 21 percent, Hillary Clinton at 19, and little Buttigieg and, and uh, Gavin Newsom are fighting it out at 9 percent. So they want Biden to step in to sort of take center stage and repel these uh, attackers of the throne. Why? Here's the big reason why, because they fear this more than anything else. Here's your vice president from earlier today. So equity, as a concept, says, recognize that everyone has the same capacity, but in order for them to have equal opportunity to reach that capacity, what we must pay attention to this issue of equity. What? Equity, capacity, <laughs> who knows? Good look, Sean, they are, they are more willing to go with a basement campaigner that they can control. With Joe Biden, you don't quite know what's coming out of his mouth. With Kamala Harris, we know exactly what's coming out. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, Raymond, it's, it's actually good politics. If you have these challengers around you that you think that could run, it's important to announce early, though. Uh, again, I don't think America wants to see him again. I, just quickly, I only have a couple seconds, 15 yeah. seconds left. The Fox News poll showed that the right direction, wrong direction numbers, it wasn't yeah. Republicans who had a large, the largest number of Amer America going in the wrong direction. It was independents. How do you win races when independents are saying at the highest level, the country's in the wrong direction? Look, the Democrats are saying that. The Democrats don't right. want Joe Biden. That tells you the policies aren't working, and he's not the torchbearer that they're trying to cast him as here. And clearly, Kamala Harris, all she could repeat is torchbearer, torchbearer, torchbearer. Yes. But it doesn't add up to anything. There's no constituency there, and they know it.
You don't get better results unless you have better policies, Raymond. Thank you for <laughs> joining me. Good to see you. Equity, Sean. Equity, 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 equity yes, com Raymond. Complementarity, equity. equity. I gotta go, you equity man, you. All <laughs> have right. Have a great weekend. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.